and now the clinical features of chikungunya So the clinical features are fever, joint manifestations and rash. Now the fever. There is a period of fever more than 101 degree Fahrenheit followed by a febrile phase and then brick traditions of the fever and it may be associated with chills and rigor with no diurnal variation. And then joint manifestations. The joint symptoms usually start with the arthritis or arthralgia and the involvement is symmetrical and the joints including the fingers wrist elbow and ankles and toes are affected in this symmetric fashion and larger joints can also be involved like knee joints or shoulder joints can also be involved in some cases there may be migratory polyarthritis and effusions may be there and this pain tends to be worse in the morning and relieved by mild exercise and aggravates by the aggressive movements and as I mentioned earlier, the classical bending phenomenon in chikungunya is due to this joint involvement of the back and lower limbs, which forces the patient to stoop down and bend forward. And then rash. There is maculopapular rash, more prominent on the upper extremities and face, but the rash can occur in the trunk and lower extremities. And some additional symptoms may occur like backache and headache in case of adult and photophobia, diarrhea and vomiting in case of children. Now due to the clinical similarities with chikungunya, some other differential diagnosis may be considered with importance like dengue, reactive arthritis, rheumatic fever and malaria. So now what are the differences between chikungunya and dengue? So fever more than 102 degree Fahrenheit in chikungunya it's 3 plus and in dengue it's 2 plus and severe polyarthralgia arthritis rash and lymphopenia these features are more prominent in case of chikungunya but neutropenia thrombocytopenia hemorrhage shock and death these features are more prominent in case of dengue so these are some differences between chikungunya and dengue now what are the investigations of chikungunya so the investigations of chikungunya include routine investigations and specific investigations in case of routine investigations complete blood count will get decreased wbc count lymphopenia increased esr and in case of crp cd active protein increased in acute phase but may remain elevated for a week and sgpt increased and ns1 antigen to exclude the dengue 
and in case of specific investigation there are four specific investigation blood culture real-time reverse transcriptase pca detection of immunoglobulin m antibody and demonstration of rising tetra of immunoglobulin g antibody and this blood culture is to isolate virus that is chikungunya virus real-time reverse transcriptase pca detects the viral rna within five days of onset of illness and detection of immunoglobulin m antibody demonstration of rising data of immunoglobulin g antibody fourfold rise of immunoglobulin g antibody at least three weeks apart and first sample after seven days and this real-time reverse transcriptase pcr is the investigation of choice in case of acute phase and detection of immunoglobulin m antibody is the investigation of choice in second week and demonstration of rising data of immunoglobulin g antibody that is useful in chronic phase and for the first two investigations that is blood culture and RT-PCR the sample is heparinous blood for immunoglobulin the sample is serum so now the treatment of chikungunya for the treatment of chikungunya currently there is no antiviral drug or vaccine available against the chikungunya virus so the treatment is entirely symptomatic so the principle of treatment is control of fever and pain treatment of dehydration additional pharmacotherapy treatment of any organ failure prevent iatrogenic risk and functional impairment so now the control of fever and pain the paracetamol is a drug of choice and if paracetamol is ineffective tramadol alone or in combination with paracetamol can be used cold compress may reduce the joint pain and damage prescribing corticosteroids is not recommended until an expert consultation and there is no indication of tmard before eight weeks avoid aspirin or NSAIDs to reduce the risk of bleeding manifestations and then treatment of dehydration plenty of water with electrolytes and 5% dextrose in normal saline or normal saline in hospital setting and additional pharmacotherapy like antihistamine can be used for itching antibiotics can be used to treat secondary bacterial infections and zinc oxide cream or calamine lotion for the papular eruptions and treatment of any organ failure prevent iatrogenic risk and functional impairment and if there is any serious complication or special situations treatment will be decided by an expert and now what are the indications for hospitalization of a chikungunya patient the indications for hospitalization intractable pain postural dizziness decreased urine output any bleeding manifestations repeated vomiting leads to nothing per oral any serious complications like CNS, cardiac, hepatic or renal and comorbid conditions like CKD, CLD, CVD, diabetes mellitus or pregnancy. So this is all about chikungunya. Hope you like this video and please give your feedback in the comments below and subscribe this channel for next videos. Thank you.